Hello everyone, welcome to ACE Online and welcome to Daily Current Affairs session. A very uh, good evening, welcome to the, uh, all the students. So, yeah, before we going into the discussion, let us see what are all the articles that we are going to uh, cover today. Very good evening, Raj Kumar, Santosh Malini and Srinath, welcome to the session. So, we have a very uh, factual articles today, there is no concept involved, so it may not take uh, too much time uh, today. Briefly, let us see what are all the articles that we are going to cover. Volcanic vertex rings. So, recently there was an uh, volcano and there were some rings observed. So, a special phenomena, it was collected from Indian Express and this can be asked in the as part of science and technology. So, this is the first article that we are going to cover. Plastic overshoot day report. So, this is part of environment. Current affairs from environment becomes very, very uh, important because most of the questions from environment will, will be covered from the current affairs itself. Next, again one more report, 2024, Corporate Climate Responsibility Monitor Report. So, corporates means here companies, the private companies, how they are responsible in reducing the, uh, you know, negative climate impact. So, that was a report, we will see briefly who released it and what are the report that it says. Then, mercenary spywares, so it is a cyber issues with, uh, as part of science and technology. Then Senkaku Islands as part of international relations as well as geographical mapping they may ask in the exam. So, there was a previous question of UPSC civil service, we will see the question at the end. Then Eurasian Otter, so it is a animal species again part of environment. Then finally, Mahatma Jyoti Bapule from Indian history, right, so the modern Indian history. So, these are all the articles that we are going to uh, cover for today and finally, we will also see some practice questions from these articles, right. So, without delay, let us start the first article that is Volcanics Vertex Rings. You can observe here, so there was a volcanic eruption and there were some rings observed in the sky and why we have these rings? They may ask very briefly, it is not too much conceptual as such, very basic logic, we will see why the rings has been uh, released. So, before that, let us see the context from where this phenomena was observed. Since last week, Mount Etna, we will see where is Mount Etna also related to the facts about Mount Etna also we will see that has been asked many times in the exam. So, the uh, Mount Etna was releasing lot of volcanic eruptions since few days in the Europe and it has released perfect rings of smoke into the air. So, this is what the context is, right. So, before going into the what actually Mount Etna and all, let us understand what are volcanic vortex rings? It is nothing but a, a shape of, I mean the smoke that has been released from volcano becoming a shape of ring, right. So, if you observe here, let us take this as an volcano. Let us say this is a volcano, right. So, from here, the smoke is getting released and once they release, it becoming a clear ring. It is re releasing the clear rings into the air. So, these rings released by the volcano which are of smoke and ash, those are called as volcanic vortex rings. So, I am repeating again. So, volcanic uh, vortex rings are nothing but smoke ash that has been released from the volcanic vent. This is called as the vent, the topmost circular one, the crater, right. So, this is called as the vent. So, from this the smoke and ash together releasing in form of rings. So, that is called as a volcanic vertex rings, right. So, you can observe here the facts related to it. It is nothing but a, a donut shape. So, donut you, you donut you might have, right, you might be aware about it. It is a donut shaped rings, the round rings released which has composition of gas as well as ash, right, releasing from volcano. Now, why it is generating? why this particular phenomena is generating. So, again I am coming to this same thing. So, just that the shape is exactly at the, the vent is exactly at the circular and smoke is being released all throughout this diameter. Sometimes there may be volcanic eruption coming from the center of the vent, from the ends of the vent, right. So, this particular, in this particular phenomena, the smoke ash is exactly releasing throughout the diameter of this vent. So, that is why the smoke is rising in terms of a circular ring. So, those are called as the volcanic vertex rings. And there is a condition also 
that when these rings are released, usually these are not seen, this is very rare phenomena, but why we are seeing there is a conditions to be satisfied. One is the gas should be abruptly releasing continuously, very intensely. If it is very slow, then the smoke will be disappeared. So, it cannot form exactly the ring. So, the eruptions that is taking place, the smoke or gas, whatever from the volcano is very intense, very intense in the sense it is very dense that the continuous gases are flowing out of the vent. So, this is one important conditions. Only if the rapid and intense release of smoke happening, then only we can consider it as a releasing of rings, right. So, this rings are being released from the Mount Etna since few days, right. So, this is a rare phenomena which happens with the certain conditions and certain regions only. Similarly, these rings can stay up to 10 minutes at max, I mean it can be more a little bit, up to 10 minutes these rings can stay in the sky, right. But if there is a huge amount of turbulence and windy condition, they can disappear immediately. So, this is also one more condition. First condition we have seen that rapid release of smoke and gases has to happen and one more condition is the surrounding which the rings are or which where the volcano is happening, there should not be any windy and turbulent condition. Then only it will, uh, the rings will develop and stay for some time, right. So, these are called as the volcanic vertex rings, very small concept. Now, the important thing is you need to know about the Mount Etna, where it is located in which country, what is the significance and all you need to understand. So, we have a number of volcanoes, can anyone recall that we have a, we have discussed Pacific Ring of Fire or Circum Pacific Belt in one of the sessions, where the volcanoes and all are focused, right. So, lot of volcanoes are present in that particular places and Mount Etna is one such volcano which is active located in the Italy this is important. So, it is located in the Italy, you can observe here, this is a Sicily, an island which belongs to the Italy and this volcano Mount Etna is located in the Sicily island. So, this may be asked in the exam, which islands and this is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea, right. So, this Mount Etna is located in Italy and the two in the Sicily island which is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea, right. So, that is important fact and also this Etna peak, the volcano means it is a on the hill only like it, it is like this. So, here the volcano happens and this is the highest peak in the Europe, this will also be asked in the exam. Th this Mount Etna is the highest peak in the Europe, right. Then this is also a world heritage site, world heritage sites are uh, designated by UNESCO, right, United Nation uh, Economic Social Organization. India also have more than 40 world heritage sites. Similarly, this Etna is part of the world heritage sites, uh, site since 2023. So, this is a fact, right. So, very small article, any doubts in this? Most of the things are factual in nature, there is no concept, only that there are two conditions in developing the rings. So, those two are conceptual, rest of all the things are factual in nature. Any doubts? I hope there is no doubt in this as this is a very factual. Next one, plastic overshoot day report, right, plastic overshoot day report. The context is India is among the 12 nations out of the all, more than 200 nations are there across the world. Out of that, India is among the 12 nations which are contributing 60 percent for the mismatch of plastic waste. Let us understand what actually is a mismatch of plastic waste. This is a country A, you can take India or any country and the waste is generated across many sectors and this country has certain capacity, right, the whole country, maybe the technology that is available, the manpower that we available, right, the machines that are available completely can handle, say for example, 1000 tons of waste can be handled, 1000 tons of uh, waste can be handled by this country A or country you can take it as an India as well, right. And the waste producing is for example, 2000 tons. So, this is a mismatch, we have a capacity to handle recycle or whatever may be all the things to handle the plastic waste, we have a capacity of 1000 tons, but the waste generated is 2000 tons. So, here it means 
we have a mismatch of plastic management. So, that is what the article says that India is among those 12 countries which are contributing 60 percent of the total mismatch of the plastic waste in the world, right. So, this is the context that we have taken, it is taken from again Indian Express. So, let us see what actually is a plastic overshoot day. Now, let us take an example 2024. Understand after that facts it is very important, I mean very easy to remember. So, 2024 January, we have a December 31 of same 2024 and in the whole of this year of 365 days, the total waste generated may be some other thing like let us assume it as a 2000 tons again. So, in the whole one year, in that particular year, right, in that particular year, the total waste generated of the country, India, take example, right, is 2000 and we are having capacity of say for example, 1000 tons, same example and we have completed it on April 1 itself. On April 1 itself, we have generated this 1000 tons waste. The country is producing more than 1000 tons, but our capacity is only to handle the 1000 tons and this 1000 tons has generated by April 1 is it's itself. So, that date in, in, which in that year, which we are reaching our capacity to handle the plastic waste, that is called as the plastic waste overshoot day or plastic overshoot day, right. I hope this is clear that on which day of the year we are reaching out the maximum capacity of plastic waste that we can handle it, right. So, that is called as the plastic uh, overshoot day, right. For each country it can be different, for whole world it can be different, right. For whole world there will be a capacity, for India there is a separate capacity, for China there will be a separate capacity. So, we have a different different capacity for different different uh, countries and overall for all the countries together we have a some capacity, right. So, this is the concept to understand, right. Is this clear? Please respond. Is this clear about the plastic overshoot day? Then after I can go with the factual things. So, I hope this is clear. Right. So, this is nothing but on particular year on in this in that particular year on which day we are reaching out the maximum capacity of waste that we can handle. So, beyond that we have no capacity to handle the waste. I mean our we can produce more waste, but we cannot able to handle it, right. So, that is called as the plastic overshoot day. Now, this is calculated for world as well as other countries and the calculation is done using the mismanaged waste index. For each country, mismanaged waste index is calculated. How this is calculated? The gap between waste management capacity and plastic waste consumption. For example, as I said, India is producing 2000, 2000 tons of plastic waste and we have a 1000 tons of capacity. So, difference between that, the 1000 is nothing but the mismanagement waste index. So, we were not able to handle the 1000 tons of waste in that year, right. So, this is the index for every country it is calculated and it is average for whole world and we will get the overshoot day, plastic overshoot day of the world nations all together, right. So, that is the concept. Now, this report is released by Earth Action, a private research consultant of uh, belonging to the Swiss, Switzerland, right. So, this is not released by United Nations or someone else, it is a private entity called Earth Action, that is the fact that need to be remembered. And it was estimated that for this year 2024, the plastic overshoot day of the world will be September 5th, September 5th will be the maximum capacity we will reach. After September 5th, we will produce the waste, but we world cannot handle it, so it will pile up that is a negative effect on the climate, right. And for India, it was estimated that we will reach out on 23rd April itself, right. So, this is a harmful thing. World is reaching on September 5th, but India is reaching even before that. So, after April 23rd, whatever the waste that is going to be generated is going to be piled up in India. So, which is a negative thing, right. So, this is a fact and the other observations made by the report is in 2024, we are going to generate 220 million tons of plastic waste. 
so means million is two, 10 lakhs right so 220 into 10 lakhs and tons so you can convert how much amount of waste we are producing as a world together so this is observation and since 2021 there has been rise of 7 percent approximately 7.11 percent of waste every year we are increasing year on year so this is the thing and as i said earlier in the context of uh, the introduction I mean, when we have taken the context india is out of 12 countries which are contributing 60 percent of the mismanaged waste right and the top three countries are china india and russia china india and russia are the top three countries which are producing the mismatch of plastic waste management right yes right right on teachers day we are going to complete it right so here there is also india specific observation understand this there is a one important point to one important observation here india is classified as low waste producing polluters there are number of country but india is designated as a low waste producing polluters because even though india is generating 2000 tons for example let us assume it is very less per person 140 crores divided by 140 crores that means for each person for each individual in the country it is only 8 kg per year so for every individual i am producing 8 kg waste you are producing 8 kg per year right so overall it is more because we are having lot of population but per capita per person it is very low that is why India is categorized as low waste producing polluters unlike China unlike uh, you can take uh, USA they are generating more than 30 40 kgs per capita right so that is why India is categorized because we are consuming less per person uh, overall it is more but person it is less that is why India is categorized as the low waste producing pollutant and one more thing mismanaged waste index of India is 68.62 percent that means the extra that we are producing our capacity is 1000 so we are producing 68 means you can take 1680 so 680 is extra so that is percentage you can convert so 68 percent extra we are producing every year which beyond our capacity so this is the important observation and one last observation is whatever the plastic that we are importing taking from other countries is more than what we are exporting to the other countries so plastic is a negative thing so we should give it to other countries more than taking more right so but here we are importing more plastic we are taking more plastic than we are giving to the other countries so these are the india specific observations any doubt in this Uh, Santosh you are saying what they will do after collecting the plastic waste see there are number of ways we have a uh, you know decomposition we have a recycling as well we will collect all this material you can take example of bottles we are taking it and we are making it as a recycling means using in some way there are t-shirts also there are shirts also which were made use of plastics you can go through it our prime minister has launched last year and these bottles all these things whatever the plastic waste we can recycle but we need a very good technology unlike other countries like USA Germany all those countries which are having proper recycling things we do not have the technology we are trying to deploy still research and development is going on and transfer of technology from other countries are going on but still we were not able to recycle them properly so we are dumping them wherever they are and there is lot of waste which is going into the oceans and then uh, even in soil as well there is certain recycling but we are not able to completely recycle all the plastic waste right there are lot of technology like incineration all these things and all again it will release lot of smoke into the air right but as of now we are trying to collect it and then recycle it and reuse it in some purpose so that is the approach that we are following right great the next article again a small report 2024 corporate climate responsibility monitor report there are many companies billions millions of companies are there including small big around the world i am saying right so all the companies around the world if you take this as a world there are number of companies and they have involved in industries like producing chappals leather or watches specs everything whatever like 
there are number of industries and in the process of producing the goods and services they are emitting lot of unharmful i mean harmful gases like carbon right so carbon dioxide ozone there are number of emissions that is happening from the industries and as we are moving towards reducing the uh, you know negative climate change impact then we are also taking the consideration of the companies it is not about the just nation we are like we are having unf triple c right where all the countries are coming together discussing and they are trying but out of that the companies are also playing very important role private participation is also playing an important role so this report is estimating the performance of private corporates on how responsible they are in handling the climate change or climate action so that is the report talking about right now who released this report they may ask you this uh, in the exam corporate climate responsibility monitor was released by whom they may ask so it was jointly released by new climate institute and then carbon market watch so these two organizations together have released this report right now they may ask you what is actually new climate institute is it is it an united nation organization is it a any private organization something like that they may ask you in the exam so new climate institute is a non profit organization that means a private and also non profit it is not working for the profit there will be certain organization which will work for the profits but this is a non profit organization which is working towards climate policy and stabilizing the climate impact on the earth so that is the objective so they want to generate the ideas and transfer it into the practical application to reduce the climate impact on the humans so this is the organization about it is a private one it is not under united nations that is important and then carbon market watch again a non profit independent organization which will uh, you know study related to the carbon carbon is the most potent gas which is affecting the climate right in terms of methane methane has carbon ch4 right and then carbon dioxide also has carbon so carbon is the most potent gas uh, which is affecting the climate so this carbon market watch exclusively works related to the carbon emissions in the world so it aims to reduce the carbon emissions in the world so these two organization has released the report now the report focuses on four main areas tackling and disclosure of emissions so company a for example we have a company a so what it will do tracking this report will track how much emissions you are re, uh, releasing into the atmosphere and disclosure disclosure of the emissions so if this company is studied and then the emissions is released into the public so public will have an impression on this company that this is re releasing more carbon into the atmosphere right so this is the first thing that the report is uh, studying setting emission reduction targets for each companies they will also set the target that you need to reduce this amount of this amount of carbon so they are also setting the targets and then reducing own emissions after setting the targets they also need to reduce the emissions right and then taking responsibility for unabated and residual emissions so if there is any residual emissions which are not accounted not calculated those also need to be taken responsibility by the companies right so these four elements are being uh, main focus of this report now what did the report said yesterday or day before yesterday itself we have discussed about 1.5 degree centigrade limitation right so after 19th century industrial revolution our climate is increasing mean the temperature is increasing and we are trying it to limit for 1.5 degree temperature by 2030 preferably but it can be up to 2 degree centigrade right so we should not go beyond increase of 1.5 degree when we compare to the 19th century pre industrial revolution times so they are saying the report has said that the economy wide emissions reductions required to limit global warming below 1.5 degrees is not possible the companies are not doing in that uh, path rather they are in a more emissions so we are not able to achieve this 1.5 degrees that's what the report has said and many companies are trying to handle it after the release of the emissions right so the emissions has already happened then they are trying to capture the carbon and then store it or they are purchasing the renewable agreements renewable energy certificates are given for those companies uh, i mean let me explain this 
something you may not be clear renewable energy certificate so here the private any of organization has saved some carbon reduction so they have involved in the carbon reduction one ton of co2 was released by this company a now what this company b will do there is a target for them to not release more than certain carbon dioxide so they will purchase this by giving 1 million dollars they are purchasing this one ton carbon dioxide so this carbon dioxide that has been saved without releasing into the atmosphere by company a was bought by the company b right company b so now they can show it as a this is their target right so some company will be doing positive things some private entities may be doing some positive things that can be bought by giving money and then they can show it as their own target in reduction so they are doing after post mortem right so after the events has happened after the emissions was removed then uh, i mean released into the atmosphere then they are trying to conserve it but the report says that you should actually mitigate of re release of the gases into the atmosphere rather than doing the post mortem elements after releasing the emissions try to mitigate reduce or completely make stop of emissions into the atmosphere so this is what the report has said right so these are all the observations of the report a watchdog means it is a you know just organization uh, like how what is the per, uh, role of dog right so if you have a dog in your home what is the role of dog it is just watching who are coming who are going and all so watchdog means it is an organization which has particular role to observe what the activities are going on so it is a acronym is a, a what you call a, an acronym that represent the role that is called as a watchdog so the unfccc for example is a watchdog of climate change right so that is the concept of watchdog right so this is about the uh, report released and any doubts so we have seen the report title who has released we have seen and what actually is the uh, estimation that has been done and finally what the observations had made related to the private companies right next one mercenary spywares recently apple says that mercenary spywares like pegasus may be attacking certain iphones they have given the statement that iphones are being attacked with the mercenary spywares right that's why we have taken this article from uh, economic times now what actually are mercenary spywares so they are nothing but releasing some illegal software into the devices for example i am having a device iphone this some mischievous persons say for example some group has launched the software through some apps right they don't need to even come and physically launch this so through any of the apps so if you touch any of the app the immediately the spyware the malicious spyware will attack your phone and all the information is collected your bank account details your uh, whatever personal details images all these things will be transferred to this devices where they are handling so this is the concept of uh, you know spyware where they will release some software through any of the app, i mean uh, the phone apps or maybe gmails or messages and then information is transferred to the intended uh, you know uh, device and then they can use this information accordingly they can take all your money right because they have all these things and they will be using right so apple is saying that there was certain attack of malicious mercenary spywares which were affecting the iphones so the statement was given spyware is nothing but a virus or software released into the device to capture the personal information so be aware uh, from your side as well right so it steals sensitive information from the individuals so that is the object you have already explained and some of the popular spywares are pegasus finspy and then galileo so these three are the most popular uh, spywares that has been attacked uh, around the world right so very brief article there is not much to explain right next article senkaku islands so the context is the china coast guard china coast guards like how india has a coast guards have conducted the patrol around the territory called as senkaku islands these senkaku islands are called by japan because they are handling it currently 
these islands are with the Japan. So, they call them it as a Senkaku Islands and China calls it as Diou, Diou Islands. So, both are same. China calls it as Diou Islands and Japan call it as a Senkaku Islands and these are located in the East China Sea. So, as of now they are part of Japan, but China claims that those islands belongs to it. All the territory, China will claim the territories in India, the territories in Pakistan, the territories in Thailand. So, everywhere China claims that whole world is theirs. So, that is their attitude, but anyway, so they are claiming these islands and they have patrolled recently. That is why th there was an article published in the Indian Express. So, it is located in the East China Sea. These islands are located in the East China Sea. Right. Let us know a little bit more about the Senkaku Islands. So, if you observe here, this is Japan, right. So, till here we have a Japan and we have Thailand here, we have Thailand, sorry not Thailand, Taiwan. So, here we have a Taiwan and here we have a China. So, this is located here in the East China Sea. So, this is all East China Sea. Below this, we have a South China Sea. So, this is East China Sea. As of now, it is under the hands of Japan, but it is claimed both by Taiwan as well as China. So, Taiwan was earlier part of China, they have divided, right. So, now even China trying to occupy the Taiwan as well. So, Taiwan tries to uh, tells that this is part of their territory and China tells their it is part of their territory, but now it is held by the Japan, right. So, you need to know the location as well and what is the issue, right. So, this is uninhabited group of islands. So, there is no humans residing in that island. Anyway, there is a importance of oil reserves and all near the islands, right. So, this is approximately 900 and uh, sorry 90 nautical miles from, from the uh, Yema islands of Japan's Okinawa uh, region, provin, uh, province, right. So, no need to worry about these names, these are not, uh, will not be asked in the exam. Just know in which water body it is located and what is the issue between which countries. Taiwan, China and then Japan, right. So, as of now, it is with the Japan, yeah. So, the islands are the focus uh, territorial dispute between these three countries. As of now, the currently Japan administration is handling it. Till 1895, these islands were isolated, no country was occupied, Japan, China, Ta uh, Taiwan, no other country was occupied, but in 1895, Japan occupied it and since then, it is part of the Japanese administration, right. Now, it is claimed by China and Taiwan as well. Any doubts in this? All factual, uh, you know, elements, there is no uh, what you call uh, concepts to explain, right. Any doubts? So, you need to know, I will show you the question also, what you need to know from here? Dispute of Senkaku Islands, what is the other name? where it is located and which are all the countries uh, involved in this dispute. So, that will be sufficient. Next article, Eurasian otter. So, it is a animal species, right? And why we have taken this article? For the first time in India, for the first time in India, Eurasian otter was radio tagged in the Satpura Tiger Reserve of Madhya Pradesh. So, for the first time it was a radio tagged, right? So, radio tagging means for an animal, there is a radio tags like RFIDs we have for vehicles. So, we can track the animal, where it is locating, uh, where it is roaming, what type of food it is eating, right. Everything can be noticed from the uh, movement of this animal. So, for the first time in India, Eurasian otter was radio tagged in the Satpura Tiger Reserve of Madhya Pradesh. The context itself is very, very important. They will ask you, right. And there are total three otter species in India, first one Eurasian otter and then smooth coated otter and then Asian small clawed otter. So, these are the three species that is located in India, right. So, you can see here the animal, you might have seen, if you have visited any of the zoos also, you might have seen this. So, this is a otter species, almost every time they live in the water, right. So, this is the context. Now, let us know about they will not ask you just the context, but they will ask you about the otters. What are these and then where they are located, all these things they will ask in the exam, right. So, it is a semi-aquatic carnivorous mammal. See, there is a very important data here. Semi-aquatic means it is not completely in water and not completely in land, mostly in aquatic in water. 
that is one important thing it is a carnivorous that means its food involves vegetarian as well as non vegetarian then it is a mammal so which gives birth without eggs right so directly it is also a mammal so all these things and the scientific name is lutra lutra sometimes they will ask, also ask you scientific names especially if you are writing the forest related exams they will ask you lutra lutra scientific name as well so this is the uh, details about this otter eurasian otter in india they are found in northern part of india northeast india and southern india right western and the high altitudes it is not located so this is the regions where we can found there in their natural habitat and it has two layers of skin the skin that they have has two layers first the top most one is thicker waterproof one so water cannot enter into the body because they almost stay in the water so the top layer is waterproof one and below that there is a warm inner layer very thin one to control the temperature so this has two layers of skin right and then it has a acute sense so it can see from very far distance it can smell from very far distance so it has a capacity to handle it the uh, acute senses it is having a valuable to handle the surrounding enemies right and it is a elusive solicitor means it won't move with the groups it is usually hidden one a very shy animal right so these are all the features of eurasian otter and the conservation status it is near threatened in iucn many times we have discussed this in iucn list it is a near threatened one right the protection status in iucn is near threatened one right so this is the thing and under wildlife protection act it is preserved under or protected under schedule 2 and under the convention on international uh, convention on migration of international species it is protected with the higher status appendix 1 so these are all the facts that you need to remember now let us know about the satpura tiger reserve as well because this was done here in the satpura tiger reserve so that is why you need to know about the satpura tiger reserve as well it is located in the satpura ranges as a mountains right uh, in the madhya pradesh in the district of hoshgad bat and then it is south of narmada river it is located on the south side of the narmada river it is not of the Nar uh, north side right so this is a fact and it connects with the pench national park it is a corridor this national or tiger reserve has a corridor wildlife corridor means all the suitable uh, things were launched between the connection between these two tiger reserves where the animals can move from one place to other place right so along with the pench national park it is a connection of corridor this is also important and denwa river is the main water source of the park many times this national park is located on which river sometimes they may ask you in the exam so this satpura uh, tiger reserve is located on the denwa river right which joins in the tawa river it is a tributary of tawa river in madhya pradesh right and this satpura tiger reserve has three protected areas three protected areas satpura national park bori sanctuary and then pachmari sanctuary so these three sanctuaries has certain parts involved in the satpura tiger reserve so this will also be asked in the exam right so you need to remember that is all of uh, eurasian otter let us move to the last article for today that is mahatma jyoti bapule any doubt in this great the last article for today mahatma jyoti bapule why we have taken this article we have taken this from press information bureau pib prime minister has paid tributes to the uh, you know jyoti bapule the freedom fighter his birthday is celebrated on 11th april every year right so this is why we have taken this article now who is mahatma jyoti bapule what type of facts that need to be remembered so he is one of the indian social reformers we have a raja ram mohan rai we have dayanand saraswati right we have a number of social reformers and he is one of the most popular social reformer who advocated for the lower caste who supported the struggles of lower castes right uh, either of backward caste as well as scheduled caste dalits so he has struggled for those people that you should consider them as a equal to all other caste so there is no discrimination they, there, there should not be any case of discrimination he was one of the inspiring role model for the ambedkar right so he, he was born uh, sorry he was born in 18 
30 something anyway uh, he was enrolled in the school in 1841 right in the scottish missionary high school in the pune so this is not very important just let's know what type of uh, social reform movements he has taken place what type of organization he was launched right so his ideology was liberty equality egalitarian and socialism that means all the individuals irrespective of caste religion should be equal there should not be any discrimination that is his ideology and he was influenced by thomas pine book called the rights of man this is has been already asked in the exam in upsc capf right so the, he was inspired from thomas pine book of the rights of man which promotes the equality of humans right he also launched satya sodak samaj in 1873 very very important satya sodak samaj which is also known as truth seeker society and what is the aim of this organization that will be asked in the exam the aim is to empower the lower caste in maharashtra to empower them to participate in the mainstream as like other individuals so he has encouraged the lower caste get educated employment and participate in the society so that is the objective right and in 1888 he got the mahatma title he was given mahatma title by vithal rao krishna ji vadekar vandekar right so this person has given the title many times it's also been this particular fact is also been asked in the exam right he started a uh, campaign awareness related to the women education he was he acted an inspiration model for mahatma gandhi b r ambedkar he also educated his wife savitri pule and they have established first indigenous women school in india right so these are all the contributions of jyoti bapule right so that is all for today's session let's solve some mcqs right so today's articles was uh, most of the things are factual in nature right so there is a uh, uh, no concept as such to explain most of the things are facts you need to remember a lot so try to revise them and remember you can answer right first question which of the following statements about volcanic vortex rings are correct volcanic vortex rings are correct they are donut shaped structures composed of gas and ash which are expelled from the volcanic vent during an eruption so they are, uh, this is the definition they have given let's see whether this definition is correct or not first statement the rings tend to disintegrate quickly if conditions are windy and turbulent so that is the second statement this phenomena is unique to mount etna volcano in the italy so this is the third statement so how many statements what type of what are all the statements are correct from this let's see first one yes it is a donut st uh, shaped structures which are coming out of the volcanic vents right when during the eruption so first statement is correct so you should eliminate option b the rings tend to disintegrate quickly if conditions are windy and turbulent yes correct so that's what we have seen if there is a more wear and all so this also is correct now let's see this phenomena is unique to mount etna this is the wrong statement because this can happen anywhere unique means no other place it is happening it is not unique to mount etna it is a feature of mount etna but is not unique it can happen in any of the regions right so that's what you need to observe i did not discuss this but to make i mean to know how you are observing you need to understand the statement it is not unique to mount etna it can happen anywhere right so third statement is wrong hence answer is a i don't know most of you have answered it as d almost everyone have answered it as d because you did not observe this it is not a unique right rather it is a feature second one which of the following bodies organize the plastic overshoot day so which of the following organizations uh, organize the plastic overshoot day that's what the question is first they have given earth day network global footprint network earth action new climate institute so what is the answer for this
global footprint network is given by earth day so this is not the uh, i mean answer so we did not even discuss about it earth day network new climate institute is not related to this report it was for private corporate report there was a 2024 report so this is not the thing so answer is earth action yes sham malini trida ramya rajkumar santosh srinath ranjan sahana so everyone have answered it it as correct very good let's move to the next question what is common to the names pegasus finspy and galileo sometimes mentioned in news what is the common to the names pegasus finspy galileo sometimes mentioned in news first one satellites malwares ransomware and telescopes so what is the answer for this you can eliminate two things satellites and telescopes so this is not satellites or telescopes this is not ransomware also ransomware means uh, taking care, taking the control of the device and once they pay money then only they will release the code or the device right so ransomware is different it is a malware right so which is a software so answer is b right so yes everyone have answered it as correctly very good next one this was asked in upsc prelims 2022 very very recent question right so very recent question i have taken from directly from the paper which of the following statements best reflects the issue with senkaku islands sometimes mentioned in news first one it is generally believed that they are artificial islands made by the country around South China Sea. So that is the first statement. China and Japan engage in maritime disputes over these islands in the East China Sea. A permanent American military base has been set up there to help Taiwan to increase its defense capabilities. Through International Court of Justice, though International Court of Justice declared them as no man's land, some South Asian countries claim them. So, this is the four statements. So, what is the answer for this? Yes, East China Sea, not North China Sea. Okay, there is no North China Sea, there is a South China Sea, but there is no. First one is wrong, it is not even located in the South China Sea. And then this is not related to the uh, Southeast Asian nations and Taiwan defense, no, this is also not. So, China, Japan often dispute among these islands. So, the best possible answer is B, very direct question, but you need to know the issue. If you know, do not know the issue, then you may confuse, okay, it is located in the South China Sea, you may choose the option A. So, you need to know the issue. The last question for today, which of the following statements about Eurasian otter is incorrect? They are asking about the incorrect statements. Yes, all of you are correct. Uh, there is no wrong answer from your side. Very good. South Asian otter and they are asking about in, oh, sorry, Eurasian otter and they are asking about incorrect statements. It belongs to the reptile family, first statement. In India, they are mainly found in the Himalayan regions. That is the second statement. It is the only water species found in India. So, these are the three statements. So, what are all the incorrect statements? Fifth question. First, it belongs to the reptile family. No, it belongs to the mammals, mammals family, right? So, this is not belonging to the uh, reptile family. So, first one is wrong. In India, they are mainly found in the Himalayan regions. No, it is mainly found in the southern and then some Gangetic Valley and the northeast region. So, second statement is also wrong. Third statement, it is only water species found in India. No, there are three species I have showed you that there are three type of species, right? So, this uh, is also wrong statement. You can come to the discussion if you confused, right? See, yeah, in the context itself we have discussed. The other two species found in India are smooth coated otter and then Asian small cloned otter along with that. So, total three are there, it is not just one but 3. 
right. So, answer is D. Most of you have answered, I do not know, some people have confused. Uh, so, you may be uh, forgot about the context. So, this is the answer, answer is D, right. So, this is all for today's session. We have a very good facts rather than concepts. So, you have to try to revise them multiple times, remember them and answer them. You can answer uh, most of the questions if you read 2, 3 times, right. So, this is all for today's session. Thanks for supporting. Keep uh, liking our videos and keep subscribing. Uh, have a great evening.